I'm Alex Wolf from Information Week, and we're here with Michael Slater from BuildingWebApps.com. He's a Ruby on Rails expert. Michael, what is Ruby on Rails? Why should I care about it? Ruby on Rails is a framework for building web applications, and there's two parts to it. There's the Ruby language, which is a modern object-oriented language, and then there's Rails, or Ruby on Rails, which is a framework, a model view controller framework that makes it much, much easier to build applications using Ruby. Now, you were telling me most people don't know Ruby on Rails is open source. It's actually a great tool to build web apps, build your site upon it. That's right. Uh, it's probably best known for being at the heart of the 37 Signals applications, like Basecamp. That was actually where it started. It was extracted from those applications. Uh, but it's also used in some fairly high-profile sites today. Yellowpages.com is a Ruby on Rails site. Uh, Funnyordie.com is a Rails site. Revolution Health. Those are just a few examples. But there's a problem with it, and you're trying to solve it. Tell me about the problem. Tell me what you're doing to solve it. Well, I think the problem is really just education. It's a paradigm shift for someone who comes from the PHP or the .NET world. There's a lot of new concepts to learn. It seems a little bit mysterious, and I think a lot of people have been afraid of it. And so we're trying to make it easier. We're trying to provide access to the information resources that are spread across lots of blogs by aggregating them together in our site, buildingwebapps.com. And then we've built a free online course available on the site called Learning Rails. All right. Both so they can go to your site and learn about it. And you also have a second part of a business model, which is where you're going to host stuff. Tell us about that. So in building the buildingwebapps.com site, we built a platform for aggregating content from other blogs and for publishing our own content. And we've concluded that this platform would be useful to other people, so our business is actually Collective Knowledge Works, Inc. And this summer, we'll start a private beta where we will enable other people to build sites like building web apps on information domains of interest to them. Okay, last question. If I want to start building Ruby on Rail apps, I go to your site, I take the course, but what else do I need to do? What are the quick building blocks or things I'm going to have to do? Well, it's all open source, so you really don't need anything other than a text editor and the software that you can download from, from uh, various source code repositories. Um, our course will get you started. You probably want to go buy a couple of the books, um, what, but you really don't, you don't need to buy anything. That's what one of kind the of apps things. can I build? In other words, does this replace what I would do in JavaScript? in CSS, what does it, what does it, what kind of apps can I do? So it's what's called a full stack framework, that is, it includes everything from the front end to the back end. It is designed for database backed applications. It uses JavaScript and CSS and HTML, so the front end of your app is in those standard front end technologies. The back end technology uses Ruby on Rails, and then Ruby on Rails also includes some support to make it easier to do the Ajax stuff for your front and end. And how do you deploy it? You'll, you'll create an executable, you have an app that uploads to a site. What, it's what, it's deployed it onto a web server. It's a little harder to deploy than, say, PHP. You need to have an application server. Typically, the typical setup is an Apache web server fronting to an application server. Uh, there's an open source one called Mongrel, which is the one most widely. Used. Okay, Michael, thank you. Give us the site again. This is Michael Slater from buildingwebapps.com.